from the President's Point Man on the Environment, EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. Mr. Administrator, thanks for being here. Good to see you, Brad. I heard you in the Rose Garden, obviously supporting this move, talking about the benefits of it. For people who are skeptical about it and have problems with it, what do you tell them tonight? That America has been leading on this issue even before Paris. Uh, we're at pre-1994 levels, and we're at pre-1994 levels on our CO2 footprint before Paris was ever entered into. In fact, from 2000 to 2014, we had an 18% reduction in our CO2 footprint. So the United States has nothing to be apologetic about with respect to our commitment to, to using technology, using innovation, using air, American ingenuity to address issues like CO2. What Paris represents, Brett, is a bad deal for this country. And the president, re I think, really hit home today that he's going to have an America first strategy, not not just in trade, not just in national security, not just in border security, but also in issues like the environmental agreements like Paris represents. I know you've heard some of the reaction. It's been all over the board, but take a listen to some of it that we gathered late this afternoon. It is a huge mistake, and future generations will look back on this day as one of the worst things that's happened in the 21st century. We are going to lose millions of jobs for hard-working Americans because the president yep. is going to honor a promise to the coal industry rather than the promise that he should be honoring to the rest of the world okay. and to the future generations of Americans. Every Chicagoan and Illinoisan who depends on Lake Michigan and our aquifers for safe, clean drinking water at risk because of Donald Trump's recklessness. It's an extraordinary abdication of American leadership. He's made us an environmental pariah in the world, and I think it's it is uh, one of the most self-destructive moves I've ever seen by any president in my lifetime. Your reaction? You know, what's interesting about those comments today is if you go back to when Paris was entered into by the nations across the globe, there were environmental groups here criticizing the deal because it didn't hold China accountable. It did not hold India accountable. The largest polluters in the world didn't have to take any steps until the year 2030. India, in the agreement, was, it wasn't going to take any steps toward CO2 reductions until they received $2.5 trillion in aid before any positive re response. We're already taking those steps, Brett. We have nothing to be apologetic about. We've led the world in CO2 reduction. We're going to continue to lead the world in, in CO2 reduction because of innovation and technology. What we ought to be focused upon is exporting what we know to places around the globe like China and India and helping them reduce CO2 emissions as opposed to setting targets in Paris that no one can meet. You know, what's interesting about this entire discussion is the targets that were set in Paris, the 26 to 28 percent reduction in greenhouse gases and CO2 emissions, the, pre the previous administration, President Obama, every action he took, the climate action agenda that he entered into, still fell 40 percent short of those targets. It was a failed deal to begin with, and we were spending $292 billion on one rule, the Clean Power Plan, in response to Paris. But you had already dealt with the regulations by what you were doing administratively here. There are people who look at this accord and say it didn't have teeth, so the U.S. could do whatever it wanted to, and by not being a part of this now and being one of the three countries with Syria and Nicaragua, which didn't think this accord went far enough, and the U.S. outside of this deal, that we take ourselves away from the table as far as American leadership in the world. That's what they're saying. Yeah, we're the United States. We don't lose our seat at the table, number one. We're already a part of the UNFCCC, which is the Climate Action Committee there at the UN. That seat is secure. But here's the deal. When you look at this situation with India and China and the rest, what people are not recognizing, this isn't about China suing the United States for getting out or India suing the United States for getting out. If you go back to 2016, there were environmental groups, law review articles that were written that said, now that we have Paris, it's the precursor to us using the court system in this country to compel regulatory response by the EPA to further drive away fossil fuel, drive away coal, while China and India continued building to coal generation. So this was truly, the president did a courageous thing today. He truly put America's interests first and said, we're going to remain engaged on CO2 reduction. We're going to export what we know from innovation technology. We're going to make sure that we have an America first strategy, but we're not going to yield to a framework that was, that was failed from the very beginning that put America second. Now, I saw the U.S. Chamber of Commerce did a, an analysis of jobs potentially lost uh, from uh, adhering to all of the elements of the Paris Accord, but there were 25 plus companies that tried to, to lobby the administration to stay in, uh, saying that it would lose jobs. And you heard that in that montage of, of Democrats, that by pulling out, it'll lose jobs. These are the companies on the screen. What we know, 
what we know is that there was a contraction occurring in our energy sector jobs. Uh, there have been reports that showed a two and a half trillion dollar reduction in GDP over 10 years, up to 400,000 jobs, as you mentioned, by the U.S. Chamber study, and 200,000 of those jobs in, in the manufacturing sector. I mean, that's objectively measured. So th th these discussions about our inability to export green technology, I, I don't think that's the case at all. In fact, there were some that said, well, this also poses concerns with respect to national security and alliances there. You know, we, we've done this before, Brett. We pulled out of the Kyoto protocol, protocol in 2001. If you go back and read in March and April of 2001, the criticism that was being levied against President Bush, you can read the, the comments from the German Chancellor. They're almost identical to the ones today. What is the Europe, prospect of this president renegotiating, as he said? Europe wanted this because it, because it put us in economic disadvantage. And the president said, look, we're open to discussing this. We're open to discussing it. But we're not going to put America's interest second in that negotiation. The president took care of the American citizen today. Was there a lot of internal debate about this? We had heard that Secretary of State and Ivanka and Jared were on one side and there was a battle, Steve Bannon on the other. What, yeah. I mean, can you characterize? All, all of that, I think, is just simply, again, legend. What happened in this process is what happens with every decision the president makes. He had advisors around him informing, equipping, helping him make a decision. The debate was good and strong and meaningful amongst all voices, and the president made an informed decision. Everyone did the role, and it was something that I'm very proud of the president today. Finally, if somebody looks at this and says, wow, we are stepping away from our environmental leadership. We lead, through, we lead through action, not words. Look at what we've done from 2000 to 2014 in reduction. Look what we've done. We're at pre-1994 levels in our CO2 footprint. Why? Because of American innovation and technology, not because of government mandate. Mr. Administrator, we appreciate your time. Thank you.